Don't miss any of the action at Oceanside, Chula Vista, Torrey Pines, and many more San Diego schools. Download the free UT Preps app on Google Play or the Apple App Store. Hey there, sports fans. Christian Pedersen here with San Diego Prep Insider. I am on the field at San Diego as all three of the girls lacrosse championships are getting decided today. Let's go ahead and take a look at who has etched their name into eternal glory with that championship. The first game of the day, number two Eastlake, taking on number one Otay Ranch in the Division II Finals. These teams have squared off twice this season with Eastlake handing Otay their only two losses of the year. So what do you say we meet for a third time in the finals? Both schools looking for their first school title in women's lacrosse. Goal number one, courtesy of Bridget Green. Back in the net! Otay Ranch on the board first. Eastlake quick to follow thanks to Sasha Thrower. Tied game. But it was something about the Green family helping out Otay Ranch. This one's the older sister, Brooke. That's another goal. Otay back on top. Peyton Olsen for Eastlake. She comes running in, charging out of nowhere, unassisted. Eastlake ties it back up. Then it was a little bit of the goalie play. Carolina Aceves, one save. Carolina Aceves, two saves. That's how you throw off this high-tempo Eastlake offense. But it wouldn't be forever. Corey Montero gives Eastlake the lead. They go up 3-2. And thanks to Glohina Hosa shutting it down, they lead 3-2 into halftime. So we go now, second half, and it's back to the Green family. Once again, Brooke doing a little cut, doing a little shimmy, making it right through the top corner. Nice shot, tying it back up. Can she find a way to put them on top? I think so. Otai Ranch now ahead. Otai grows the lead to five. This one's Bridget Green. A little backhanded nastiness right there to put Otai up by three. But Eastlake was not done. Eastlake charging back. Julia Macias down to two. Sasha Thrower, reverse, cuts across. Lead is down to one. We go inside the last two minutes. Eastlake with a chance to tie off the penalty shot. There's Aceves again throwing down the gauntlet in goal as Otai Ranch brings home the Division II title. Congratulations to the Mustangs. Let's hear from some of them after the game. Yeah, it, it feels great. I'm really proud of my team. We worked really hard this season and I wouldn't have uh, liked to play any other team because Eastlake is the most worthy opponent. And then it's surreal. It really is, you know, being my first time, um, you know, getting even getting to the playoffs and then and actually winning CIF. The whole thing is surreal. On to the Division One game, number six, Carlsbad, number one, Scripps Ranch. Chance for Scripps Ranch to bring home the first women's lacrosse title in school history, or will it be the lowest seed on the day to make it to a final? The number six Lancers. The short answer is that the one with the better offense won the day, and that was number one, Scripps Ranch. Nicole, definitely the senior getting it started. We're gonna hear a lot more from her later today. This one's Brenna Webb, little stop, little spin, little score. Scripps Ranch goes up by two. Speaking of two, let's get the second score on the day from definitely saying, I'll take that and score, why not? Scripps Ranch up three. If you've seen Scripps Ranch before, you know Sam Fish. If not, let me introduce you to one of the best goalies in the county. Shutting it down for them, allowing her offense plenty of opportunities to keep scoring. That one's Christy Hansen. This one, the third score from Deffley. Because why not have a senior go crazy in her last career game? Got to go out with a bang, I guess. Mackenzie Frost for Carlsbad, finding the back of the net. Bringing it back down to three for the lead. But then Sam Fish tightened back up. She shut it back down, turned it around, got her offense going. Fourth score for Deathly, because she's just on fire now at this point. Why not? One more from Brenna Webb. We're still in the first half. Push this one now to the second half. The onslaught of offense just kept coming from Scripps Ranch Little. Excuse me. I think I'll score right there from Brenna Webb. Other in the defense, Sam Fish, as I said, one of the best goalies in the county, putting her skills on display there. This one's Jolie Rydell with the speed, just finding a little crease right there, and that's a goal. Tack on, maybe another save from Sam Fish, because she can stop anything, it would appear. And then why not show you the last score of Nicole Deffley's storied career. Goal! As Scripps Ranch goes on to seal the deal 
bringing home the first title in school history for women's lacrosse as they take down Carlsbad. Congratulations to the Falcons on all their successes this season. Let's hear from the coach and the team after the game. It's super exciting because it's never been done before and we're the first to do it, so. Absolutely, they came out so pumped. Right before we went on, I asked them, how are you feeling? I said, are you nervous? And they're like, no, we're so excited. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess my butterflies aren't nervous. This then their excitement. Yeah. So, yeah, these girls just come. They're so resilient. They fight from the very first draw all the way to the end. So they totally deserve it. It feels really good. Um, it's like our, my last game like ever in my life. So I really wanted to come out strong. And it really felt good for my whole team to work together like that. We've been working for this all season. So it feels really good. Finally on to the open division, the biggest and baddest, Lacosta Canyon taking on Torrey Pines. Biggest and best rivalry in the county for the biggest and best game in the county. Why not have this be the last sentence on women's lacrosse for 2016? First out of the gate, we gotta cover the goalies. Both ends having great nights, shutting down the scoring. Sophia LaRose though for Torrey Pines having a little bit better of a night because of moments like this where she made presence of mind to come out of the goal and say, whoop, I got that. Finally, let's get to some scoring. Taylor Scornavaco, first one on the board, Tory Pines up, but not for long. LCC coming charging back, courtesy of Taryn Sullivan, cutting through, scoring! Mavericks even it up. Mavericks take the lead moments later. Tessa Bass finding her off the pass, and a score. Mavericks gonna grow their lead, courtesy of Lauren Westgarth. Cutting across, finding a seam. LCC now up two. Jordan Hayes, though, is gonna get a great pass and score! As the Falcons fight back, LCC only up one going into halftime. Coming out, Kelly McKinnon, first person to strike for Torrey Pines as they tie it back up. Now it's Torrey Pines' time to take a little bit of a lead. Nicole Morris cutting through, rumbling her way in. Another score, Falcons up. 4-3, not for very long though. Tessa Bass tying the game again, 4-4. Four, four. This one is a back and forth battle because of course it is. Why not have the biggest game go down to the biggest types of plays? Right there, Tori Pines, Marissa Kubera gives them the lead. Moments later, Ariel Sharabani gives them some breathing room. Then they're gonna grow it by another one, courtesy of another score from Kubera. She weaves her way, does a little downstairs, excuse me, I think I'll be a champion type of shot. With the lead at three, LCC desperately needed some offense to try and get back in it. Ella Boyce does just that, brings it back to two, but there was Tori Pines' big time offense. Shara Bonney getting it back up to three. Then as I said earlier, Sophia LaRose, big time goalies make big time plays. That's a save, that's a setup for Lexi Kaplan, putting an exclamation point on it, throw in one more from Kubera, and you have yourselves a Tory Pines Open Division Championship. The emotions were raw for the Falcons after the game as they not only swept the series on LCC, but took down everybody in the process of naming themselves champions. Congratulations to all the Falcons and all their successes this year. Let's hear from the team after the game. It feels amazing. Last year, we won 9-1 to our second game. We came out with a lot of confidence and we didn't make it happen. And this year, we beat them all three games and it feels amazing. We've been working so hard for this and LCC is our biggest rival, so no one we'd rather be in the championship game. I think my teammates are the, like, the only reason why I was able to do what I can do and I love to like give one and give one, get one right back. So it's really just like a teamwork kind of thing. Okay, like last year we came out and we didn't pull through with the win and this year it was a ton of heart with our team. Everyone just from the start of practice since February 20th when we started till now, we just kept going up and up and put in our best work in. It feels really good. I think we've worked really hard this whole season. Um, I've been on eight varsity teams and it's really nice to win finally after all those years. I knew that from the day season started. We have one of the best teams in San Diego and I really like, no, and that's honestly we had it. You know, they all four of these guys, well, Sophia, 
the one who was injured is one of our seniors also, but the other four have been on this team since freshman, and they've lost one championship, I guess, last year just to LCC. I mean, in first stretch of four or five years, we weren't beating them ever. So, you know, for them to be able to step up and lead this team and, and help us figure it out towards the at the end, you know, that was important for us.